Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jo. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Single cells are the basic unit of any organism. Humans are composed of approximately 37 trillion single cells that happily coexist. <laughs> Takes a village. I know, right? <laughs> cells interact with their surrounding environment and decide whether to divide or die. In diseases like cancer, this process rather goes awry. <laughs> That's right. Today we're going to discuss a paper by Juncker et al., which reviews methods and applications for single cell analysis. When the disease is caused by a single cell, the use of bulk tissues will obscure the contribution of that single cell. That's absolutely right. And researchers use bulk tissues for analysis, primarily due to the fact that single cells can only provide about six picograms of DNA per cell, making it really difficult to detect. That's absolutely right. To, to overcome these problems, multiple approaches have been developed to, to amplify the DNA. We have the For All You Seek poster here available, um, and you can download it on the Illumina website. You know, on the poster, you can see that the most commonly used methods are Malbach, multiple annealing and looping-based amplification cycles, and MDA, multiple displacement amplification, both of which work to amplify genomic DNA as to improve coverage. Malbach may potentially reduce amplification bias by ensuring that amplification products cannot serve as new templates. SmartSeq, on the other hand, um, and digital RNA are the most commonly used methods to study RNA from single cells. SmartSeq really promotes the full-length transcripts because it's got a five-prime anchor that uh, makes sure that the transcripts are full-length. That's one of the reasons why SmartSeq is quite popular. But it's important to remember that DNA tells you who is there, but RNA tells you what do they do. Absolutely right. I mean, in order to study single cells, you first have to sort them from mixed populations. Commonly used techniques are laser capture microdissection, serial dilutions, FACS, which stands for fluorescent activated cell sorting, and microfluidic platforms. Single cell studies have shown that there is an immense heterogeneity and cell-to-cell -cell variability within a single tissue. For instance, we learned about copy number variations in neurons. Neurons have a higher copy number variations than any other cells, with more deletions than duplications. These differences may play a role in the functional diversity of the neurons. That's right, and we can also deduce cell lineages from single cell studies on a metagenomics note, with single cell sequencing, we are able to better comprehend the functional roles of various microbial populations within a given environment. Studying single cells allows us to understand how single cells uniquely fit into a much larger picture. A comprehensive study of complex tissues or microbial populations will require the sequencing of thousands of single cells. Advances in automation, robotics, and microfluidics will expedite these studies to provide a detailed, unabridged perspective of the contribution of individual cell types. To do that, we also need really strong bioinformatics to bring all this data together. That's absolutely right. If you liked today's episode and want more, please subscribe to our channel and do let us know what you think. We love hearing from you. And uh, don't forget, our poster is on the website and you can download it for free. Until next time. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.